we thank you for the sacrifice that your son made for us. And through that sacrifice, we are victorious. Hallelujah. We thank you. And as we study your word this morning, we thank you for revelation knowledge flowing freely, unhindered, uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic spirit. We thank you, Father, that we decrease and you increase. All of you and none of us. Thank you that you have our ears to hear, our hearts to receive, and our spirit to contain your word. And I thank you, Father, that we study your word. Our minds are being renewed so that our lives will be changed. Thank you for thanking through my mind and speaking through my vocal cords, all that you have me to say. To lead your sheep. And Father, we'll be ever so mindful to always, always. give you the praise and always give you the glory. It's in Jesus' name and everyone in agreement say, Amen. Amen. We want to welcome our radio and internet audience to the program this morning. <laughs> My name is Pastor James Anderson and I'll be speaking on the subject of faith. And we're specifically talking about qualities for development. Yes, sir. This is the third teaching in a series, part two of a series that we have entitled Faith Development. And this particular teaching is designed to show us from the Word of God how to develop our faith. Faith is important. I don't think we realize it, but, but it's our means of existing victoriously in this earth. If you don't believe, you can faint. You know that, don't right. you? Turn with me to uh, Psalms Chapter 27. I'm going to show you something. Psalm 27. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. All the time. That's right. Not sometime, but all the time. Yes, he is. His goodness never changes. No. God. Never changes doors forever. Yes. Yes, yes. I want to look at uh, Psalm 27 and 13. This is David now. Mm -hmm. Psalm 27 and verse 13. When you get there, say amen. amen. This is David. David said, I would have lost heart. Your Bible may say faint. Mm -hmm. I may have lost heart unless I had believed. Past tense, right? Right. Watch this. That I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You know what he's saying? If I didn't have faith to believe that I would see the promises of God, I would faint. So that tells me at that time he, he didn't see the promises. He didn't see the goodness of God. He said he believed he see the goodness of God. And that's what we have to do. We have to believe that no matter what circumstance we're in, that we will see the promises of God manifest in our life. Well, to do that, you have to develop your faith. If your faith is not developed, and I'm going to tell you something, you don't reach a point where you complete it here on earth. It's a continuation. We're continually developing our faith. We're continually growing in our faith. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen. And it's important that we do because faith is how we appropriate everything that God has for us. Amen. Are y'all okay with that? Mm -hmm. So we're talking about qualities for development. We said qualities are characteristics that a person possesses that distinguish them from another person. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. As Christians, we should be, we, we ought to be distinguished from the world. We shouldn't look like the world. Our faith should distinguish us from the world. Mm -hmm. That means that when trouble comes in the world, we don't respond the same way because right. our faith distinguishes us from the world. Mm -hmm. When trouble comes, instead of getting worried, we, we become joyful. We're walking around singing songs. Amen. Amen. Are y'all all right with that? Amen. Hallelujah. That's what it's all about. Amen. Amen. All right. So we're looking at qualities for development. Peter has listed several qualities that we are to add to our faith for development, all right? We're going to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. Hallelujah. 2 Peter chapter 1. And we're going to start at verse 5. When you get there, say amen. 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 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 says, But also for this very reason, giving all diligence. Now, we talked about that last week, what diligent meant. It meant putting forth maximum effort. Okay, so he's saying that we got to put forth maximum effort and add to our faith. The first thing he talks about here is virtue. 
So he said, we have to add to our faith, faith first of all, virtue. Uh -huh. Now, what is virtue? The word virtue here comes from a Greek word, arete, A-R-E-T-E. But the E has an accent on it at the end, making it sound like an A. Okay, so it's arete, all right? And it means excellence. Mm -hmm. Now, in the Gospels, remember when the lady touched Jesus' garment and he said, virtue has gone out of my body? Yeah, yeah. That word virtue there comes from the Greek word dunamis, mm -hmm. meaning power. All right. My Bible, actually, the New King James, actually translate that word to power. Okay, so that's two different words being used, even though they spell and sound the same. Okay, that virtue in the gospel, matter of fact, is used seven times in the New Testament. It's in uh, uh, Mark, uh, I used to know the verses, Mark 6 and 30, I think it is. It's Luke uh, 6, 19 and Luke 8, 46 or 36. And then it's used also in Philippians chapter 4 and 8. Uh -huh. All right? The word virtue. And then the other three are in this, uh, in, in Second Peter. Are y'all okay? Are, are y'all still with me? Yes, I don't want to lose your confusion, okay? No confusion. <laughs> no confusion. So the word virtue here and in verse 3, I think it's verse 3 where it's used up there, where it talks about virtue. That's talking about excellence. Uh -huh. So you and I are to do things with them excellent spirit, an excellent attitude. Amen. You to try to do your best at everything you do. Right. This is what he's saying, you have to add to your faith. That means that we have to put forth effort. Now remember, he said you have to be diligent about this. Right. We got to put forth effort to hear the word. We got to put forth effort to do the word. Right. Right. When we come to church, we can't let nothing distract us from hearing the word. That's when right. you're at home reading, you can't let nothing distract you from reading the word, from studying the word. Because it's the word that's going to build up your faith. Right. And I'm telling you, when you start to read your Bible, you start to pray and uh, uh, get into with God, all kind of distractions come your yes, way. Sir. The, the enemy will send people over knocking on the door. But we have to be diligent about that because if you had a doctor's appointment, I don't care who came to the house, you would go see that doctor. And you wouldn't let nothing interrupt your appointment with that doctor. But well, we have to be the same way with God. We can't allow anything to interrupt us with the things of God, with reading the Bible and praying and stuff. We have to put forth nothing. You need to unplug the phone, turn off the television, and spend some time in that word. When you come to church, don't let people distract you. Now, this is me personally, okay? So y'all have to have it. But when the word is going forth, Brother Chuck is some preaching, I don't want nobody talking to me. I get frustrated because I'm trying to get in the word. But I know the enemy will use people, but you can't tell them that they're being used by the enemy. They get upset. I'm a child just like you are. You know? <laughs> but you being used, but you interrupted me from hearing what the word is saying. Yeah, you know right. what I mean? So I don't even like people talking to me during that time. Okay? Because, see, something is being said there that can change my life. Right. That's the purpose of coming. I'm in expectation of receiving. That's right. And the enemy will use anyone. In any circumstance that he can yes, he to will. interrupt me, because he recognizes how powerful the word is. So we got to put forth diligence to hear the word. You have to make sure that when the word is going forth, you focus on that word coming forth. And don't let no distractions get in the way. Any conversation a person had, they can wait to afterward. And people say, well, it's an emergency. I, and I tell them that's what 911 is for. Call 911. <laughs> <laughs> no, <that's different. laughs> so if, if it's an emergency, that's what they got the emergency number for. All right. Anything doing the service? That's why you people say, I'm, especially Bella, say I'm looking so intense on that because I'm serious. Right. This is my life, that's right. and what I'm hearing is either going to be life changing or life threatening. That's right. Okay, so I need to make sure that I'm hearing the right thing. I don't, I don't amen everything. No. Right. You know, amen is my spiritual signature. That's right. You don't put your natural signature on everything, do you? No. If you read something and, it, and it's all out of place and out of way, you ain't going to sign it up. No, I hope not. I hope you read it before you sign it. Well, I don't put my spiritual signature on everything people say. Because you got some people, and we've had them in here, and God bless them. I know they haven't grown yet. But you'll come here and say, well, you know, God has caused this to happen to you. Well, I ain't finna say amen to that. No. Right. You understand? I'm not finna put my spiritual signature on that. That's why I'm listening to, to, to what's being said. Because I've seen people, when, when somebody preaching, and they said, somebody said, in here, I ain't calling no name. In here, somebody said something that was way off. And one person was half asleep, woke up, amen. 
I'm looking at him say, no, that's not an amen moment there. No, sir. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you have to, what I'm saying is you have to pay attention <laughs> to what's being said. You have to put forth effort because the enemy want to distract you. In uh, yes, Matthew uh, 13 and 19, it says that uh, he would take the word or snatch the word from them who don't understand. Uh -huh. See, the victory is understanding what you hear. Right. In Proverbs 4 and 7, it says wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, but in all you're getting, get understanding. Understand. Uh -huh. See, if you drive up to that red light, that, that traffic light out there in the road, and you drive up to it and it's red, you're going to do what? Stop. 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 Why? Because you understand that that light, the red means stop. 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 Green means go. Uh -huh. But we have to have that same understanding with the word of God. Right. Uh -huh. When the word of God says something, I need to understand what it means. What it means. Uh -huh. And that's the right. purpose of right. preaching. Now, now, your teacher is the Holy Spirit. That's right. All right. He's your teacher, but he's giving us preachers and teachers to help us to understand. So when they're preaching and teaching the word, you need to be focused. You need to put forth effort because the enemy is going to try to distract you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even if even if you have to put on that face, you know what I mean. Say, you know that'll keep them back a little bit. Yeah. Put that look. Put, you know, give them that. Yeah. What you talking about? Look. Give them that look. Let them know. Hey, this ain't the time for that. You know what I mean? Because so, it's important to you. Amen. 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 All right, I said a lot on that. Didn't I? <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's very true, huh? Yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> oh, well, that happened. That's an accident. That wasn't purpose. In the All right. So we said that the word virtue here that we're to add to our faith, it, it, it refers to excellence. All right? right? Now, excellence is defined as the state or quality of excelling or being exceptionally good. See, mm -hmm. it, I, mean, I, 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 I give you that definition again. It is defined as the state or quality of excelling or being exceptionally good. Everything that we do, not just, first off, we got to recognize that whatever you do, you're doing it as unto the Lord anyway. Okay, man, if, 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 if you do something and man don't pat you on the back, don't worry about it. Amen. Because you ain't doing it for man nowhere. You're no. doing it for the Lord, okay? Right. He's the one that's going to be your reward, okay? Because right. a lot of things that you may do, you may not get recognition for, right. okay? Right. And if you focus on man patting you on the back, then you can get discouraged. You'll get dis disappointed, and then you'll stop doing things for the Lord. Right. So what we do is we're, we do it not as unto man, but as unto the Lord, okay? Right. And because we're doing it for the Lord, we need to do it with an excellent attitude. Right? Amen. We need to give it our best. You know, if you go and, and uh, you move this chair, like I watch Andrew, when Andrew set the chairs, he does it with excellence because mm -hmm. he makes sure that they're lined up right. Now, to some people, it don't matter if it's off track or something, but see, that little attitude of trying to get it lined up shows that he wants to do things with an excellent attitude. Everything that we do for the Lord needs to be done with an excellent attitude. Do it to your best. And I'm going to tell you a secret to that, too. Don't murmur and complain about it. That's right. Amen. Murmuring and complaining is murmuring and complaining against God. That's what happened to them in the, in the, in the wilderness. They murmured against God. Yeah, yeah. And they stayed out there in the wilderness for, a, for, for, for 40 years when it was just an 11-day journey. See that? What the, murmuring, what the murmuring did was push them further in the wilderness. That's what it does for us. It pushes us further in, in, in the circumstances of the situation yeah. that we're in. Yeah. I heard Creflo say this, too. I like it about a circumstance. He said, a circumstance ain't nothing but a circle that you're standing in. That's right. right. And then you can step out of that circle Anytime through the power know. of God. Okay. You understand? So don't let a circumstance get you down. All right. All right. Are y'all okay with yeah, that? Sir? Right. So <laughs> what he's saying is that we have to do everything with an excellent attitude. attitude. You have to, and, and, and I'm telling you something, when you do it with an excellent attitude, it seems to me like it goes smoother. Because yeah. if you're doing it grudgingly, then that's that's coming against your spirit. And, yeah. and it's, and it's kind of like uh, what, what uh, Jesus told Paul, why are you uh, pricking against the, fighting, fight, fighting right. against my, my way of doing right. things is what he right. was saying. Right. Well, that's what you're doing. When you're murmuring and complaining, you're fighting against mm -hmm. what God has called you to do. And I'm going to tell you something, too. When you step into, a, uh, when you become a Christian, there are responsibilities and sacrifices that has to be made. Wow, we got quite, we, now everybody ain't being everything else. Why ain't everybody being that? Oh, yeah. God was right. 
right. there, 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 there are responsibilities and sacrifices that has to be made. You know, but the sacrifice we make is nothing compared to the sacrifice that Christ has made. So our sacrifice may be I have to give up a program that I'm watching to do something that God has called me to do. Right. Or I may not to go shopping when I want to go shopping. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So my sacrifice is I have to give up things that, that self want to do. Right. But it's important because I want to do things with an excellent spirit, right. Right. with an excellent right. attitude. Right. Amen? Are y'all all right with that? Amen. Excellence is defined, once again, as the state of quality of excelling or, or being exceptionally good. It is an action characteristic or feature in which a person excels. When you excel, you are succeeding. Right, right. See, God wants all of us to excel. He wants all of us to excel in, in the things that he called us to, okay? Mm -hmm. As Christians, God the Father wants us to excel in all that we do. Therefore, when we do things with the spirit of excellence, we excel and in the process give honor to God. When you're doing things with an excellent attitude and you're doing it your very best, God gets glory out of it. Amen. And that's our goal is to give him the glory. See, see, when people see that you're doing things different than you used to do, mm -hmm. they're they going to want to know why. When they see that, when people say something to you, you don't, you don't curse them out, you don't, you don't talk about them, you just forgive them and love them. They're going to say, well, how do you do that? See, that's your opportunity mm -hmm. to witness. You're excelling in that. You're doing that with an excellent attitude. An excellent attitude forgives people. An excellent attitude helps people. An excellent attitude gives. That's an excellent attitude. All right? And that's what we're to add to our faith. Are y'all all right with that? Mm -hmm. Whatever we do or say, we are to do it as representatives of the Lord Jesus. Whatever we do or say, we're to do it as representatives. Uh, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, around verse 20 or 19, that we are representatives for the kingdom. All right? Uh, we are to bring honor to Christ in every aspect and activity of our daily living. Remember last week we read uh, Philippians 2, 12 from the Amplified Bible, and it says that we're not to do anything that would discredit the name of Jesus. See, we're to bring honor to him in our everyday living. We have to examine Philippians 2 and 12 from the Amplified. It says that we're not to discredit the name of Jesus. All right? Um, everything we do, we need to examine in our daily life to make sure that it's bringing honor to God. Because a lot of choices and a lot of decisions that we make in life in our daily living is not bringing honor to God. It's not, it's, it's not glorifying God, okay? Mm -hmm. A lot of times we're glorifying the enemy through our choices. So we need to examine our life. That's why in 2 Corinthians 13 and 5, Paul said, examine yourself and see if you're in the faith, if you're doing it the way God say do it. Got, and we need to examine ourselves every day. Every choice you make, examine yourself. Mm -hmm. That's why in Proverbs uh, 3, verse 5 and 6, it says, uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Mm -hmm. In all your ways, acknowledge yes. him. Yes. When right. you do that, when you acknowledge him in everything you do, you bring honor to him in your daily living. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. you know, but see, a lot of times we don't acknowledge God because we know God won't say no. That's right. We know that this is not what God wants us to do, so we don't even go and acknowledge him in that. We just do it. Yes. And then when we get in trouble, we want to blame God because we're in trouble. We put the blame on God. God allowed me to do this. No, you made a choice and you did yeah, that. That's what put you there. Yeah. The choice you made. God didn't allow it. God didn't want you to do it. He told you what to do. He said, well, you got choices that may come to him. Right. And he'll let you know. He'll let you know from his word. He'll let you know through his spirit. But we don't do that, see? Okay, I don't want to get the message, Amen. so I've got to stay away from that. <laughs> we are to live above reproach and blame. We are to live above reproach and blame. Mm -hmm. See, don't let grace give you the idea that you're not to live holy. Mm -hmm. Grace is there to help you live holy. That's right. Amen. I'm a grace teacher. I love grace.
But there is putting forth effort means that, see, I've been put in a, a, a holy position. Now that I'm in this position, I need to behave the way this position requires. Mm -hmm. If you're on a job and you go from worker to supervisor, well, the, the position that you had as, had as worker is different of the, of the requirements for that position is different than the requirement for supervisor. Right. So now you, you can't behave like the worker used to behave. You got to behave like a supervisor. Yeah. Now. You understand? Same thing with us. We've been put in the position of holiness. You know, you were made holy. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, Jesus has presented you holy, blameless, and above reproach mm -hmm. in God's sight. Mm -hmm. right. Turn to Colossians chapter 1, and then we're going to go from there to 1 Peter if I have time. Colossians chapter 1, let me show you this. Hallelujah. Amen. Are y'all understanding this? Yes, sir. Praise Amen. Jesus. Colossians chapter 1, and we're going to start at verse 19. Colossians chapter 1, verse 19. When you get there, say amen. 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 Praise Jesus. This is Paul. He says, verse 19, For it pleased the Father that in him, of my Christ, all the fullness should dwell, all right? And by him to reconcile all things to himself. That word reconcile means to restore. Yes. <laughs> that, that's kind of like having them on your head and looking for them. <laughs> I have them in my hand and I'm looking for them. <laughs> <laughs> Verse 20 says, And by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Now, you know what that peace is there? That's not peace where you got peace of mind. That's peace with God. Uh -huh. right. See, we were at war with God because of what Adam did. We were, in, we were at enmity with God. Right. But through Christ's sacrifice and yeah. through his blood, yeah. we are now restored in a rela back in relationship with God. So we're no longer at war with him. We have peace with him. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, it says, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Verse 21. And you who were once alienated and enemies in your mind, in, in the way you think, by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled. Look at his verse 22. In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. So we've been put in the position, see, see we've been put in the position of righteousness, righteousness. Okay, mm -hmm. and with righteousness comes holiness. It comes uh, uh, we're 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 blameless and we're above reproach. Now that we're in this position, we have to behave the way the position requires. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. You understand? See, you are holy in God's sight. He's not looking at your behavior. He's he's looking at Christ's behavior. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? See, when you mess up, he's not looking at your messing up. He's looking at the blood. Right. right. So he sees the finished work. However, when we don't line our life up or the behavior up with what position we've been given, God doesn't punish us, but we open the door for sin. We right. open the door for the devil right. to come in through sin. Right. See, the enemy comes in, and a lot of times you are experiencing negative things in your life, and the first thing you say, well, God is punishing me or God is mad with me. You know, it ain't God. Is that maybe what you are doing has opened the door for the enemy to come. Yeah. Yeah. See, we've been delivered from the curse, but the curse is still in the earth. Yeah. And when you act in agreement with what causes the curse, mm -hmm. then you can experience the curse in your life. That's right, that's right. Not from God's perspective, but from the devil's perspective. Go ahead and preach then. Do, do you understand that? See, it's not God doing it to you. It's that you open the door yes. and the enemy is now doing it. That's you know right. why? John 10 and 10 says the thief comes to steal, steal, steal kill, and destroy. destroy. So if things are being stolen, killed, and destroyed in your life, mm -hmm. it's not God. No. Right. It's the devil. Yes, right. But Jesus said in that same verse, I have come yes. that you may have life and have it more abundant. And that word life comes from a Greek word zoe meaning the God kind of life. Mm -hmm. And the God kind of life is not a life that brings punishment on people. In the Old Testament, he punished folk because Jesus hadn't died for them. Mm -hmm. they, were, they, they lived under the law. As a matter of fact, I know that uh, it's a statement that I made to tonight 
where I said that people teach that God doesn't hear the prayers of a sinner. And a lot of folk that are religious would come against that because they read John 9, 31, where it says God doesn't hear the prayers of a sinner. Mm -hmm. But those that worship him and do his will, those he hears. Mm -hmm. But listen to what the verse is saying. Those that worship him and do his will. Yeah. That scripture is under law. You had to be under law. I mean, you had to do what he said for him to hear you under the law. But right. well, we're under grace. Right. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19, it says that we come into the holies of holies. That's praying to God. That's in his presence. How? By the blood of Jesus. Blood. Not by your works. No, but by the blood of Jesus. Blood. You better hope he hears sinners. You better hope he hears you when you're out there in the wilderness. That's right. Because that's the way back. So see, under grace, we enter the holies of holies by the blood. Mm -hmm. Under the law, they had to enter in by doing what was right. And then only the priest could go into the, the high priest only right. go into the holy right. of holies. Right. But when Jesus, was, when, when, when he defeated the grave, when he came up out the grave, the veil was ripped. Yep. That veil that separated oh us from the holies of holies, yeah. that's God's presence. Yeah. Now all of us can go into the yeah. presence of God. Yeah. Even when you ain't doing what you're supposed to do, you can yeah. still go into that's the right. presence of God. Ain't that good news? Yes. So you Come want to thank God for yes. grace. Yes. <laughs> thank God for grace. And we need to be able to rightly discern the Bible. We need to be able to rightly discern the truth because if you don't, the devil will twist it and get you in trouble. See, the devil will quote scripture to you. Yeah. But he'll twist it. That's what he did with Jesus. When he tempted Jesus in the wilderness, yeah. he was quoting scripture. He said, don't the Bible say, don't the word say that he gives you angels he does that charge over us. So he said, climb up to the top of the steeple mm -hmm. and jump off. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, but we're not the temple of God. That's That's right. Right. I know the angels, I know the angels protect me, but I'm not going to go stand in the middle of the highway. So just to show one of them cars, now I might do something with one of them little coopers. I might it hit me, I might bring it up. But one of them semi trucks gonna run me over. I'm no. <laughs> yeah. you know what it is. <laughs> But what I'm saying is, I know that if the angels protect me, but I'm not going to put myself right. in, a, in, a, in, a, in a tempted situation where I'm tempting God. Right. So we have to learn how to rightly divide the right. truth. Amen. We have to stop here too, and we'll pick it up next week. Are y'all okay with that? Yes, sir. Amen. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you give us understanding through your Holy Spirit of your word. And we thank you that you have given us promises that we can live on, that we can depend on for victory in our everyday life. And we give you praise and honor. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for your precious Holy Spirit. It's in Jesus' name and everyone in agreement. Say amen. amen. Once again, we want to thank our radio and internet audience for joining us. My name is Pastor James Anderson. I'm here at Faith International Christian Center. If you're ever in the Bradenton area, we would love for you to stop by and visit us so that we can love on you. We're located at 7409 Manatee Avenue West, Bradenton. Or if you need to contact us, you can do it by phone at area code 941794-1713 or by the internet at www.ficwordchurch.org. Thank you. We would love to hear from you. Yeah.